Welcome everybody to my show, my podcast. Um, I would like to thank everybody who is listening to this. And this show is called Grim. And today, my guest on the first, on the very first episode is one and only Mr. Adrian Watchtower, whatever the fuck you want to call him. I call him Watchtower. But I would like to thank you for coming on my show. Oh, thank you for inviting me. This was <laughs> this was done at, at the day of, so we're just yes. going to go with it. <laughs> we're just going to go with it. <laughs> so thank you for having me here. It's, it's no problem. And um, I would like to say, you know, congratulations on, I guess, it's what, six, seven months WWH being around now? Uh, yeah, it's about seven, heading to eight months now, uh, since the relaunch. Yes, yes. And, um, I think I've been here maybe since, what, a month before Shogun? Uh, I believe I, so, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm, I wasn't here too long after the relaunch, so. <laughs> right. It's, uh, I'm happy for it. But let me ask you right off the bat, we are heading into Road to WrestleMania, and I guess 48 hours from now, and I want to know, looking at the card, you know, what do you think, you know, of the card that you put together? I think it's a very good card. Uh, it, I mean, there were some changes that had to be made, but overall everyone that's on the card is pretty psyched for it um there i mean inc- including your match with uh naomi martin and cm hunk and you and tio for the tag team titles i'm sure all i'm sure both sides are completely happy that this match is still happening well in a sense i'm not kind of happy too much because originally the idea was supposed to be, I guess, the last match between Bullet Club and Old School. Um, Johnny V retired like a pussy, and so that's not going to happen. Yeah, so, he, yeah, he uh, he retired unfortunately, but you know it's that's just how it goes in the business. You know that you just you gotta you gotta keep moving forward. Yeah, and see, I mean, the thing about it is, is you give. Whenever, um, what's his fucking name, decide to not show up for our match on a few weeks for Shogun, you came to me, you said, hey, go find yourself a partner. I got me one. So my question, I guess, to you is, is why why no partner choosing for Levinator? Why wasn't he allowed to do that? Well, unfortunate. Well, are you asking why Levinator never chose his partner? Basically, is that what yes. you're saying? Well, it, a lot of people don't realize, but Levinator got released this week since uh, he couldn't put a lot of effort either. So, both old school members are no longer in WWE, unfortunately. So that's why we had to make the last minute change. So now you have a. Uh, pretty good team with CM Punk and I'll be Martin since they've been on a winning streak as well. Yeah, I will say great winning streaks for both, but the, the thing about it is, is that, you know, Punk, while he's good, he's partnered up with the bitch who can't even wrestle in my opinion. I mean, I'll be Martin said, Really, really easy matches, in my opinion, in my face. Same thing with Punk. So what the hell did they do to deserve a shot at our titles? Well, let's let's just state the facts here. CM Punk has been on a mini streak. Granted, he lost to Ashley Renee before, but before meeting Ashley, he was winning matches. And the same... Ha- was with Naomi Martin. This was after you two met up. So these two, as a team, deserve to get the recognition. And 
CM Punk and Niobe don't have a problem with each other in teaming up either. So this it worked out in the end for them and for you too, because now you have opponents that are hungry for for tag team gold as you are and Tio. Yeah, and you see the thing about it too is is that they're not even really I don't think they're really going to be much of a challenge come World to WrestleMania because, I mean, look, let's look at the facts. I'm a two-time tag team champion, one time with Tio Bullet Club as a team <laughs> has held the title one time. And so if you look at the facts, they're the underdogs to the match. And rightfully so, because they don't really stand a chance. Like you said, they've come together, yet me and Tio have been together since fucking New Year's Eve. So I think experience-wise, it's more on our side. Right. (laughs) Now, let's not forget, though, aside from Niobe and CM Punk, there are other teams there, like Vicious Impact, also Domination Inc., also, The Order with Blackout and Phantom, and I believe there's two more that, that are a team as well. So there's teams out there that are, oh, Soulless Kingdom's another one. So you, there there are teams there that want tag team gold. So I, I think now that with Old School retired and, and gone, it, these new teams are now showing up saying, hey, we want gold. So I think you... And Tio, if you win the tag team titles, have huge targets on your back as far as now people are gunning for you. Uh, I like the fact that you brought up targets on our back. So I'm really glad you did that because I see ever since Shogun, whenever I won my first tag title, I've had a constant booty on my back that people want to show up face me damage being one of them he showed up ran his mouth off saying that you know he wanted his shot at me and yet like so many others before him and since he lost so i think honestly for us to be tag team champions again would cement the fact that we are the best team in WWH right now, but I, I also it, it could be yeah. But I also you brought up Ashley Renee, and I was looking on that site earlier because I have time, and I noticed that she's no longer the international champion. So I want to ask you about the situation surrounding one Ashley Renee. She decided to retire as well. She she said that she thought that once she became champion, she thought there was no competition. So she's now she now left the company as well. Well, I want if I can for a minute, I want to kind of bring a conversation into the fact that I mean you had not too long ago where you came to me and basically said that you want to push me for the international title. And I want to ask you here and now, and I want the honest truth because this whole thing is going to be honesty. What are your intentions for the international title as far as me and, I guess, the likes of Orion Payne, uh, Chris Orton? Hell, let's throw Caleb Foster in there because... Pretty soon, I see him coming up for it. So, what's the outlook as far as the international title in your eyes right now? Uh, well, there's already a good there's already good talent there. I mean, this weekend at Road to WrestleMania, we have Jacob Cass going against Ryan Payne. So that's already in itself a great match. And then you have people like Equinox and even possibly Chris Matthews or even Blackout or even others, even though like people like Blackout and Brady and Caleb are going for the hardcore, you they you know, there is potential of them possibly going after the international as well. So it's it's an open court. 
basically. So even for you, like if you want to go for the international, what's stopping you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's really nothing stopping me. That's why I brought up the conversation me and you had about you wanting to push me for it. And, you know, I mean, I, I'm kind of flattered. And I do recall a conversation we also had where, you know, while I was contemplating the whole retirement thing, um, you wound up telling me, said, do you want to just retire known as just a tag team guy? Or do you want to be known as one of the greats? in WWH and I wound up saying at the time I believe I've changed my mind about this I said I don't know you know the tag division seems like it's on fire right now and that part hasn't changed but I think I would rather retire better than every fucking body else has retired so I'll throw my name into the international championship hat as it's so called and uh you know whoever wins the road to WrestleMania, you know i'm happy for them. just uh i may have a target on my back with the tag times they have a target on their back for a national toss because i'm coming for them. right <laughs> but that's how so, it, that's, that's how it normally is when you're champion you, you have a target on your back so let's keep in theme with Road to WrestleMania, um, we have the World Heavyweight title on the line as well. No, uh, no. We don't. Damn, no. I thought we did. Uh-uh. I got to stop drinking. <laughs> but, okay, but still talking about the Heavyweight title. Randy Fields is a champion. Mm -hmm. I know he defends at Mania against the Ryan Reigns Memorial Battle Royale winter and nick sanderson mm -hmm. what what's your uh opinion on that match right now well i will say that um the location for wrestlemania is it's it's it hasn't been announced but tickets are already on have been on sale for the past month or two and it's basically almost sold out after the tickets went on sale during the Royal Rumble uh, month. So once they found out who won, that's when sales went up big time and it's already close. There's art, I would say the outer rows of WrestleMania. Um, you know, since it's a big event, it's we always do it in big stadiums. So the outer rows of WrestleMania are still available and the cheap seats but we still have a month to go and already I can already tell that it's going to be sold out so I'm already looking forward to it just by that match alone Nick Sanderson versus Randy Fields for the world title and then you know you have other big matches too like the international the tag the hardcore the bombshells they're all going to be defended at Wrestlemania that's already a given so it just depends on what happens at road to Wrestlemania if uh if things stay the same or change, we don't know. And, you know, and it's a good point. I mean, the broke-ass people like I was when I was working in the independent scene not too long ago, they may be able to afford the uh, the cheap seats, <laughs> but they're going to be way up high with their fucking binoculars going, I can't see shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, could be, that could be the case, but, you know, I, I think I think in my view, it doesn't matter where you're sitting as as long as you're enjoying the experience. That's all that matters in the end. You, you're there to have fun. You're there to enjoy the, our product, and then not only that, you're there to have fun at WrestleMania Access, and not only that, it's it's full on WrestleMania week, where where we're have where we're having it. So there's going to be a lot of things going on just during the week. I mean, we have a lot of radio promotions to do, uh, TV appearances, uh, even some gaming uh, events too, because a, a lot of wrestling fans are gamers too, so we're gonna be having those as well. So a lot of things are going on and we're already 
at least over here on at the headquarters, we are working very hard to make sure that everyone leaves home, not leave home, but leaves WrestleMania very happy. And everyone's getting, a lot of people don't know this, but everyone's getting like a swag bag too as they get to WrestleMania or even at WrestleMania Access. You're going to get a pretty big um, bag full of WWE stuff. So, you know, that's what you get for getting the tickets and tickets to WrestleMania access, just a lot of fun stuff ahead. And I'd also like to say, you know, I haven't really made an announcement about this yet, but I'm going to now. One of the things going on at WrestleMania week is I know a bunch of people go there for music. Also, my band, the seven deadly sins, we're going to be playing a concert. Exactly the night before WrestleMania, and, you know, we're basically going to steal the Metallica thing here, <laughs> and we're going to call our concert the night before. So that's uh, one of the things that I can't wait for. Okay. But I know in other promotions, they have a uh, Hall of Fame thing or something going on mm-hmm. the night before. Is right. WWH going to have a Hall of Fame ceremony the night before Mania? Um, it's, it's, we're only eight, barely going eight months into the relaunch. So I think for now, we're not going to have one. I'd say maybe next year or the year after that, depending on how well business is doing for WWH. But for, uh, now, but for now, I would say no, because we just came back. We're, we're too busy trying to bring back and make the best product par- possible with WWH, you know. So uh, for now, it's just no. And plus, if you think about it, if we do that before WrestleMania, wouldn't that would kind of take away your spotlight if you think about it? I'm glad somebody else agrees with me because WWE is wrong. But um, yeah, but uh. Let's let's talk about aging for a minute here. A lot of people don't realize how hard working of a mind you really are as far as behind the scenes at headquarters. What's a normal day for Adrian Hart like? You mean like the time that I wake up and to the time I go to sleep? Is that what you're asking? No, I'm talking about like behind the scenes, you know, putting the shows together and everything. What well, is a normal day like production wise? Well, okay. Um, I get to the stadium two days before showdown happens. Myself, Riley, um, The Rock. Angel and Lisa Brooks. We all get there before showdown happens, and we just we book the we book the show. And the way and we like the reason why we do it two days. You know the reason why we get there two days before showdown happens is we want to make sure that we're not interrupted. We don't want anybody bothering us, and that way. At the same time, production trucks also arrive two days before the, you know, before showdown happens too. So, by the time that the talent gets there, uh, the ring is already set up, the entrance is already set up. So, you know, let's say you get there on the day of showdown and all that, you won't have to worry about when the ring's going to be made because the, the ring will already be there, and people are already training in it. So, you know, it's I'm there to make sure that. Everyone is on a strict schedule. I mean, it's strict, yes, but it comes with the big bucks. You know, I'm paying a lot of money to all to both talent and and staff of WWE. Like, you know, a lot of people don't know how much I'm paying you and others. But it's let's just say if you decide to retire now, you wouldn't have to worry about wrestling ever again. <laughs> I I really wouldn't because of the fact that. And I'm going to say it. I'm getting five million a week. I'm happy because of the fact that you know, I've, a lot of people don't realize how long I've been in this industry. I've been doing this 14 damn years, 
granted, I did take a year and a half off uh, a few years back, but people think, you know, oh, they can wrestle day in, day out, you know, and it doesn't, and it doesn't affect them, but would you agree with that, that maybe we have one of the harder jobs in the world? Uh, of course, because a lot of people don't know that, um, are you still there? Yes, I'm right here. Okay. Well, a lot of people don't know that aside from just wrestling, you're doing a lot of appearances, a lot of, um, interviews that happened before showdown. So like in other, um, interviews that I've done. Um, I said that Jacob Cass and Ryan Payne, they're doing, they're doing radio promotions to promote Road to WrestleMania. And also, I believe um, Nick Sanderson and Chris Matthews, they too are doing appearances as well, like on local, local TV stations. So it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of people that are booked are doing a lot of these appearances and interviews and they seem to be having fun with it because they can be themselves, but at the same time, they're promoting our product. Yeah, and I know for one, to be one of the guys that, you know, does uh, appearances on everything, I can say for the fact that, you know, I, I say it on Twitter all the time, I hate media people because of the fact that, you know, they're always asking questions. They're doing what I'm doing tonight, basically, sticking a mic in your face and going, tell me what you think. <laughs> and right. I, I don't like it too much because I think the questions sometimes I'm repeating myself over and over and over every week. But, you know, <laughs> to do media appearances to try to get people interested into WrestleMania this year, I think... After Sunday night, if you're not interested in WrestleMania, you're not a wrestling fan. Hmm. So, because, I mean, I looked at the card, I saw the uh, matches we had. I think, honestly, it's going to be one of the better shows. Even some people are going to fucking lose the real tag titles. <clears throat> but, um, it's just, it's a matter of opinion, I guess. So, let's go to Showdown for a while. Let's talk about Showdown. Um, Randy Fields, seems like to me he's been disappearing a lot. Like, he's been, uh, what's that American thing? Shuffled in the mix, as it were. Even though he's the world champion. Um... Does that seem like the case to you, or do you have a different view on it? Well, he yes, he is the world champion. I mean, and he is booked for this coming showdown against John Blade. Um, one of the, the reasons, mighty John Blade. <laughs> yeah, he's the greatest wrestler of all time. You know, and uh, he he, you know, John Blade was basically running his mouth saying, "I want this, I want that." So I just, so I told Riley, look. Book him against Randy Fields just to shut him up for that week, because <laughs> he's always gonna. Because John, the way John Blade is, is, uh, I mean, he's a good wrestler. You know, he he does his best, but other than that, he he's he he tends cocky. to cocky. He's yeah, he's arrogant and cocky, and he tends to overhype himself a lot. So, I want to see how he does against Randy Fields. I mean, Randy Fields may not see it as competition, but in the end. Um, it could be like this. Could, he could show a preview to Nick Sanders to know what he's going to do to him at WrestleMania. All right. So, as we all know, you know, if you beat the champion, you basically get in line for a title shot. What happens in your eyes if John Blade somehow, with divine intervention, beats the world champion? Where do we go from there? Well, if he if he if if he beats Randy Fields, then yes, he is in line for a world title shot in the future. Because um, right now, that would 
as a, you know, when it comes to facing as a champion, you got to beat him more than once in order to be like, I deserve it because, hey, you, you came up short twice against me, that type of deal. So let's say if Jake Orton beats, in theory, beats Randy Fields twice, then he technically rightfully deserves a world title shot in the future because he beat Fields twice while he was still champion. He beat a world champion, nonetheless, two times. Which I've done many times before, so... <laughs> Right. So, you know, I'm sure. So that just shows in itself, like, okay, he deserves the shot because he beat him more than once. If John Blade can beat Fields more than once, then yes, he will deserve a title shot in the future. But again, a, a lot of things that I've noticed with Blade lately is he he tends to overhype himself a lot and usually comes up short. Not saying that he doesn't try, it's just he, he always, he gets close, but not close enough. He's, in my eyes, he's kind of like Jeff Hardy was back in his younger days of being a solo wrestler. He's good. He, he can do it. He just keeps coming up short. And so, you know, and that's not to blow smoke up being by his ass because I, for one, fucking can't stand Randy Fields at all even though I want him champion more than Chris Matthews. But the thing I see about it is is that, you know, the only way that John Blade will beat Randy Fields is if for some reason the damn apocalypse happens, there's divine intervention, and God goes, I want him to win. I mean, that's the only way I see that happening. But I have been noticing a lot lately within the past few months since Rumble, there's been a personality kind of change to one Randy Fields. I may have been, I may have been drunk more for most of it, but I want to get your opinion because it kind of seems like to me he's going from being you know, lone wolf, Megan's everybody to basically just thinking he's the king and everything. Well, and well, yes, well, remember, he is the world champ. However, I do kind of see what you're saying. Like, you're basically kind of stating that it's getting to his head that he's on a different level than everyone else. And that's, you know, it, rightfully so. He is the world champion after all. But you're kind of saying that all that gold is getting to him mentally is that what you're stating yes because uh, that's exactly what i'm saying i've from a guy who's held the title a world heavyweight title 19 times i'll tell you for a fact if the title doesn't get to your head there's something wrong with you and because you know it's it's kind of it's kind of like Randy Fields' whole biker thing, you know. Whenever the gavel, the gavel can basically warp your mind and it can twist you around. And I think that's what the world title is doing to him. I think he's going basically from looking to prove himself to everybody he deserves to be champion to basically... You know, I'm Randy Fields, and I'm going to keep this title no matter what because I'm fucking better than you. He's playing a CM Punk, in my opinion. So. Do you think, okay, so wait. So you're saying that he and CM Punk could be talking backstage since CM Punk is in WWH? That's, I, I haven't seen it with my eyes. I have heard rumors of it, though, that maybe Punk's giving him some uh, tips about respect. And so I think I think that's maybe what what's getting to the champ because of the fact that, you know, he's gone from the series of epic matches for Chris Matthews and having to prove he deserves a title to now basically holier than thou believing he's never gonna lose it. So. So, speaking of CM Punk, let's 
talk about the World Tag Title match that I'm involved in in 48 hours. Okay. It's going to be Niobe Martin and CM Punk against Bullet Club. Mm-hmm. Now, what... I know we touched on this earlier for a little bit, but I want to talk about it. What do you think caused Naomi Martin and CM Punk to come together to face us? Other well, than because you told them to. <laughs> well, they've been on, you know, I can't speak for them, but I put them together for this match because those two have been on a on a on a streak not together I meant but as far as separately so I want to see how they do as a team and what better way to reward people that have been winning and working hard than to give them a tag title shot at Road to WrestleMania against a good team like yourself and Tio and they they're actually looking forward to it they're they, they've been training from from what they've been telling me and also from what they've been telling Riley, too. So I think both of them are probably going to give you a good run for your money there, Jake. All right. I'm going to play a little prediction game with you. Road tag title match. Who comes out the winner in your eyes? Um, well, um, I... It's very tough, but I think it could be you and Tio, only if Tio's head is in the game. Because even though he's been, you know, attacking, he attacked JV and Lev enough to where he basically sent them packing as well as you did. Um, he he hasn't he he hasn't seemed to be himself lately. So. It, it all depends on how Tio's feeling, but and if Tio's not there mentally, then I think CM Punk and Niobe are going to get the win. But let's let's think about it this way, though. If <laughs> Tio's head's not involved, if Tio's basically out of it mentally, it's going to be two on one in a sense. But as you know, and as viewers of WH showdown no it wouldn't be the first time my partner didn't show up right so and right. even then I still won but it was against fucking hick sisters who didn't even belong in my fucking name to begin with but as as you said you know he he hasn't I've noticed that change with him. Like, you know, I've tried to sit down with him. I've tried to talk to him and say, you know, hey, what's going on? And he'll maybe sit down 30 seconds and then fuck off. And it's just, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Maybe Demi can figure it out because it seems like them two have been spending quite a lot of time together while I'm off training. They've probably been getting to the booze cabinet again. But the sense is, you know, this is what's going to happen. But let's also talk about, I guess it's what, five or six uh, divas for the Bombshells title? It's Sunday night. Okay. uh, Okay, Jake, uh, let me make this clear because a lot of people don't seem to know but WWE bought out WWE so those terms no longer work anymore <laughs> I, I got confused okay I forgot they were called bombshells <laughs> so but yes it's four bombshells for the bombshells championship and it's going to be under a ladder match which is Morgan McGinn defending against Bailey, Lacey Vicious and Latoya Hicks Again, I think, you know, every week on the podcast, you know, there's usually the match of the night or whatever. I think maybe for the Bombshells, this might be the match of the year for them so far. Because, you know, not to put Annalise Vance, not to put Soraya Waters underneath a fucking bridge. But, you know, there's some really good talent there. And, you know, I honestly think... Now, uh, Morrigan 
has a really good chance of maybe losing the title. <laughs> because statistically, the odds are not in her favor at all. Right, okay. Because, you know, it's usually, you know, you have a 50-50 chance leaving out the champion or without the title. She has 25%. That's not very good odds at all. No, that's that's how usually it is. That's how it usually is in a fatal four way, especially in a ladder match, no less. Yes, but now I know we have some matches confirmed for Mania, and I know we got plenty of time to talk about that. But I want to talk about one of the guys who's in WrestleMania who's also a part of a tag team that's coming after us and the world tag titles, and that's the order and blackout. Um, mm-hmm. I think, you know, I forget which one wrestled this week. It was Phantom or blackout. I forget it which was, one. It was Phantom. Yeah. He, it was he a, did a very good job. He beat Carmella, even though I got to say Carmella did her very best and she even gave Phantom a run for his money too. So let's not discredit Carmella, but she came up short. That's, you know, the better, the better person won. Yes. So what, what do you think about the order and in particular blackout? Uh, the, the order, they're a yes. very strong team. And, and I like that about it. They're very strong. They, they come out, they just, they own people and they make a statement. And with Blackout, he he earned that hardcore title shot when he was the last demolition person in the Royal Rumble match. He rightfully earned that. And he's been making it known to Caleb Foster and to Brady, too, in a way, because at Road to WrestleMania, Caleb is defending it against Brady. So it doesn't matter who's the champion, because no matter what, they're going to meet Blackout at WrestleMania. But... If Brady does win this Sunday, then it may, it'll it'll turn into a triple threat. Hmm. I I do like that idea right there. That could still take it in itself. But I'm glad you brought up Brady and all of them. As some know, demolition is gone again, unfortunately. It's now merged with Showdown. Take us behind the discussions. Take us behind the thought of the merger again. Like, how did that come about? Well, it it came down to basically on the product itself. Uh, Do I want one show with 200% effort, or do I want one show with half-assed or two shows with that are half-assed and uh that's basically hey i resent to. that <laughs> well I, that's that's technically how you look at it like we have demolition which is obviously a really good show but then you have showdown which is obviously a good show too but at the same time in the end you look at the rosters and you're like i could do a you could have a lot of dream matches with both these rosters and a lot of them were wondering who's going to get promoted to showdown. And then at the time, um, we just we just did a, a roster clean out. So we released about 11 people. So, oh, at the, so, you know, they just weren't putting their effort. You know, that's just how it goes. And uh, we decided um, to just merge everyone and be like, let's just concentrate on one product in that showdown instead of worrying about two. You know, so that's basically where it's at right now. For now, we're bringing, we're only concentrating on showdown. Will we bring back demolition? Perhaps, depending on how business is, or we just may bring back inner circle. We don't know. I don't know. As a guy who was here maybe back in the day for like the last month or two of the original WWH, um, I can't remember what show I was on, but I do remember Inner Circle being actually pretty good. So if we could get all of them 
like if we get that magic back in a circle, I'd say fuck demolition. But in my opinion, I think you're stupid anyways for splitting up the fucking roster. We should have just kept showdown and that's it. Even yes, some people get lost in the shuffle, the get lost in the mix, but it was a stupid fucking idea by you to bring demolition out the fucking underground and just make a second brand. Stupid decision. But the way I see this though is is that like you said, you know, and I have been thinking about this. There is a possibility of numerous dream matches that could happen with the merger now. And, you know, and I can't wait to see what the fucking people book. So that's going to be very, very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. But now the question is, do the titles come over with their champions or do we start all fucking over and just vacate the bombshells and the hardcore title? No, the, the titles are coming with. They're, the champions are still there. There's, so we, we have five titles now. So, but now we Again. Have a, so now we, we have a strong roster to back it up. That's very, very true. Now, I don't know if you're a sports guy or whatnot, but, you know, I'm going to have to put you on the spot one more time on this one. I want another prediction uh, because I'm going to get this one on tape months before it happens. WrestleMania, Nick Sanderson versus Randy Fields. Who do you think wins and why? And where do you see the road title going from that point on? Um, that's tough to tell, to be honest. Both Sanderson and Fields are very strong talents. It, it'll it's a coin toss, pretty much. Like it, it'll it can go either way. Uh, as far as where the where the world title is going, there's a lot of talent there that that have been stating off camera that they want a shot at the world title uh, they uh, they think they're ready for it I, of course i can't just give it to them like right then and there they got to earn it but um there are people that are interested in going after it so you you may see some people that that may face you know in the future whoever's champion against so-and-so you know it may not yes. be for the title, but it'll probably be like a non-title to see how they can actually do. So it, it all depends. It all depends on who yeah. wants it more. And I will say this. There is the roster there to basically drop to Randy Fields. But I think, I think if you look at the roster in a sense, you know, it... There's a possibility, I think, in my opinion, that Randy Fields is not going to hold the title for very long. Or if Sanderson wins at WrestleMania, I just I think either way the title's in trouble with the people that are coming after it. Like, Equinox somehow is probably going to bullshit his way into another title match because, you know, he... Uh, he keeps thinking he has one. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I don't get Equinox at all. I never have uh, gotten Equinox. I know a bunch of people have tried to explain to me who the fuck he is. Who the hell is he to you? Like, who the hell is this masked freak? Well, he's a he's he's a good wrestler as well, but I think lately he's been trying to figure himself out. I think he's trying to re spark his motivation. So he can he can bring it once he's fully into it. 
So I, I think right now at Road to WrestleMania, he's teaming up with Finn Balor to go against Lance Adams and Damage. So I think that's what is needed to kickstart his, his spark. And him teaming with Finn, I would say look out for them for, for those two as well because those two could possibly go for the world tag titles as well. Yeah, they, they very well could. They lose, but they very well could. But let's go on to a, another subject. The rumors that I have heard is that Stefan Robb might come out of retirement. And then I've heard rumors that he's going to stay in retirement. What have you heard about Stefan Rabb as far as this particular rumors are concerned? Um, I did send Stefan a wrestler's contract and he hasn't, he hasn't signed it yet, yet, but I don't think, I don't know if he will, to be honest. Um, he's been, he's been very hesitant, it seems. I think he wants to, but the problem is, you know, whether or not he can, he can go like every week or something, you know? Um, it's clearly up to him, but I think if he, cause at the Royal Rumble match, he, he showed that he can bring it, but it's, he, he, he just doesn't know if he wants to. So it's, it's clearly up to him. He does have a contract that's open if he wants to, but for now he's probably going to concentrate as a trainer. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. All right. So now each time I do a uh, grim, I'm going to ask my my guests for that week to give me their top five wrestlers and top five bombshells <laughs> that they think they should keep an eye on. And that we all should keep an eye on. So first, let's do the bombshells. Give me five bombshells to keep an eye on. Well, uh, I would say Tiffany White is one. Uh, Lacey Von Erich. Also, uh, Carmella. Uh, Bailey is another one. And uh, there's a new person that just signed, and I'll, you know, hopefully she does well on her debut because she's she's booked on Showdown this coming week, and that's uh, Leah Rose. Hmm. Hmm. I would well, say also, you... I, I mean, I would also say Morgan, but she's the champion, so she's already doing well on her part. So you said specifically on who to look out for, so... Yeah, we're not looking at the champions here. We're more or less looking at the challengers. But please do me a favor and tell Bailey Caper damn hugs herself. She fucking hugs me for no damn reason. What's the fucking evidence? What? what, what? Ugh, it's creepy. So you're you're not a hugger or what? <laughs> no, it's creepy. It's this walking down the damn hallway and then just all of a sudden hugs for no fucking reason. But all right, now give me your top five superstars to look out for, excluding the champions. All right, um, Scotty Beast is one. Uh, Blackout, obviously. Uh, uh, another one would be Jacob Cass, Ryan Payne. And uh, Nick Sanderson. I like it. I very do well like it because all those guys on that list, except for a few of them, aren't coming after my world tag title. So I'm good. And, you know, well, less well for now, right? Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> because hey, you gotta, you gotta remember, like it's it's for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's. It's uh, it's my tag titles, okay? They're, they're not no, no mine. 
But anyways. Let me ask you um, this. Let me ask you this. Let's say Tio's not mentally in there and doesn't put his effort. Do you already have a backup partner to carry the tag titles if you if you win this Sunday? I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes. In the immortal words of one Triple H, there's always a plan B. So, yes, I do have a plan. I have been talking to a wrestler who, uh, you know, we're talking whether or not he's going to join the Bullet Club or not. So, for right now, I'm sticking with plan ass. Whenever plan Bud comes into play, then I'll do what I have to do. So, okay. it's the way it goes. But, I just, I want to ask you this before we sign off, before we say basically fuck the world. Any last words from the boss man? Um, well, you know, thanks for having me, obviously. And also make sure to check out Showdown and Road to WrestleMania on pay-per-view. That's going to be on the WH Network and also on pay-per-view. Uh, this, it's now sold out, so that's the only way to watch. Um, also, make sure to check out Showdown as it's happening in Phoenix, Arizona. So tickets are on sale on that, so do your best so, to get those. So I have to fly all the way to Phoenix? Yes. Screw that, man. That's too damn high out there. I'm yes. used to the cold, you know. Well, that's that's not my problem. You're it. You do what it says in the contract, and you. <coughs> remember, you signed it, so. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. So, that's and All also right. and also to make sure to follow, add, and subscribe us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. At WWH EFED, so. Yes, and I have one question. Me and you have been talking about this before we log off. Is there going to be a Bullet Club podcast during the week of WrestleMania? Um, it depends on. It really depends on you. I, I'm all down for it. <laughs> so then, okay, then we can have one. It just depends. Yes. On, then it depends. It just depends on. Demi and everybody else. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I was more going of the day because <laughs> everyone's gonna be busy at, during the week of WrestleMania. That's so, true. Yeah. So it depends on the day on where I can get everyone together. But other than that, yeah, we can. Yeah, there can be one. And plus, we also have to keep in mind we have to sober Demi up enough for it. So that's just how that goes. But all right, my name is Jake Orton. I'm fucking cooler than you. Go on Twitter, follow me at the German Virus. Come watch Showdown this week. Come watch me, Bullet Club, kick ass this Sunday night at Road to WrestleMania as we bury two more jobbers in that sense because they don't belong to have our titles. And order WWH Network if you don't fucking have it. It's really cheap. It's like fucking five dollars or something. I don't know. My accountant takes care of all that crap. But my name is Jake Orton. This is Grim. I'd like to thank Adrian Hart for being my guest this week. And uh, we will see you next fucking month, motherfuckers. Good night. Right.